the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, YouTube star, and co-host of the YouTube podcast Sensation Smart Money Happy Hour with Rachel Cruz. He's my co-host today, and that is appropriate because today we are pre-launching the pre-sale on George's first book. It is very good. It's called Breaking Free from Broke, and it's got a great picture of George here pushing out against uh, the toxic money culture to that's out there, and uh, this is the ultimate uh, millennial Gen Z guide to the things I used to say, but I say them in such a boomer way that this is actually incredible. I laughed out loud reading the manuscript. I was very impressed with the level of research that you and the team have done to put into the book, the detail, the backup. I mean, you destroy some of these concepts that are out there in such a way it is so persuasive that you just can't do stupid stuff anymore after reading this book. Mm, I appreciate that, Dave. Well, I, you know, being here 10 years now, having followed the Ramsey plan for 10 years now, me personally going from broke to millionaire after detaching and deprogramming all of this toxic Does it ever crap. feel weird to say that? Say millionaire at your age? It, it doesn't feel real. It's a number on a sheet. Do but people on, because I don't read all the comment crap, do people ever say, you know, of course you're a millionaire. Ramsey pays you a million dollars, to I, which you respond, no, he doesn't. I wish he did. That would be very nice, Dave. No, he no, doesn't. The truth is, I was I was a normal guy with a normal job, you know, marketing roles. I wasn't a personality up until a few years back. And so my wife and I, who also works here, we've just been following this stuff for years. And it turns out, if you just, you know, invest in your 401k for a decade and get your house paid off, you can become a millionaire fairly easily in America today. Yeah. There you go. So I dispel so many objections that we've heard over the years around credit scores, credit cards, auto loans, student loans. It's like the total money makeover meets complete guide to money, meets the fine print, meets borrowed future, along with my YouTube humor and snark. And uh, someone said today- A good dose of the snark. I released the, the first chapter. I read it on video. And a, a comment said, I forgot I was reading. you were reading a book. It felt like another one of your YouTube videos. And it was the best compliment. That's it. Because I tried to write a book. It really is. It's YouTube on paper. I didn't want sense. it to feel like a root canal, reading a financial book of oh, everything no. you never learned about money, but wish you did. And so I tried to make it to where even I would enjoy reading a book. And I hope I accomplished that. You did. You did. It's really, really good. And uh, Breaking Free from Broke, the ultimate guide to more money and less stress. So all of those things that people are saying on TikTok and are saying on YouTube and are saying on Instagram, when you folks are reading those and you go, you know, that doesn't sound right, but you're not sure why. George is going to tell you exactly why. I painstakingly had to explain it crypto and NFTs and leveraged real estate. And uh, it was it was exhausting, Dave. I'm not going to lie. Writing a it's book not is exhausting not... exhausting reading it, though. I was laughing my butt off. That's good I mean, news. It's just too funny. And it, we had to go to the uh, printing world and invent a new font for the book. Uh, we have officially um, copyrighted now the snark font. That's right. And so the book is written in snark font. Though that usually and, happens um, in the parenthetical yeah, for me. We looked for the sarcasm font for mine, but we couldn't get it. Um, so, But we got the snark font for you. And so that's a that's a publishing breakthrough. That's huge. And uh, <laughs> and Dave, you wrote the foreword, which is very kind of you. I don't know if you were forced to, but it was very nice of you to do that. I forced to slap my, your name man, on. I forced it. myself to since I own the company. But yeah, from Ramsey like, yeah, Press, you, I guess it. you might as well. Hey, but. I, I was honored to do that. And, and I, I, you know, as the CEO, not as an on-air personality, I read all of our manuscripts, of course, and comment on them. And. Um, uh, rather bluntly, uh, to each of the personalities before they before it makes it through an edit process, and uh, then at, but it's long before it goes to print, right? So um, that, that's why I get to read, you know, Dr. John Deloney's book, and I'm like, this book is going to rock people's world on anxiety. I mean, building an anxious life, the six daily choices, it's rocks. It's mm. really good. Breaking free from broke. 
George Camel's new book. It comes out January 16. That's right. right. And uh, we will ship it to you then. As always with the Ramsey book, it goes on pre-sale today. We're going to let you buy it in advance, and we're going to bribe you to do so. Uh, you'll get an instant access to George's newest talk, Show Me the Money, and uh, exclusive access to an online private event. A Q- it includes a Q&A with George. You'll get the audio book and the ebook when we ship the book in January, on January the 16th. And whether you pre-buy it or buy it later, but do pre-buy it, please, uh, You part of it is you're going to be tied into every dollar, and there'll be a QR code in the book that lets you get every dollar uh, free for, what, 90 days? 90 days of all the premium features. The premium every dollar. That's worth it alone. The Even if you don't want to read this book, do it for the every dollar bonus. That's well, that, awesome. That costs more than the book. Absolutely. Right? And the, 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 So we're throwing all of this together, and it's only 20 bucks. okay? So it's like over $150 worth of bonus items when you include the every dollar in there for sure. And uh, so go ahead and pre-order it. It helps George with the marketing, helps us with the marketing, and um, it helps us with the orders with Amazon, all the stuff we do to try to get a book out there. Uh, and I... Just I can promise you, I'll give you the uh, Ramsey trusted seal of approval. George is not only Ramsey trusted, but uh, this we don't put stuff out around here like George wrote it, and we just say that's okay, and we print it. Now we all go through it and beat the snot out of it. Mm-hmm. It's uh, writing a book's kind of a brutal process at Ramsey. I beat the snot out of me. Yeah, what I mean, other people were pretty straightforward with yeah you. i mean it's absolutely like, it's, it's just a, we got high standards around here apparently that, that's what i'm saying yeah but it's, it was worth it to it, to make myself better and, and write a book that i wish i had at 25 you know even at 30 and this is the book that you can give to uh, you know even if you're older this book is going to be one of those like what finally, is older you know let's say like in your 40 in your 70s <laughs> If you're 70, this is a great book for you because uh, the font is perfectly sized. <laughs> we made sure of that at least. God, George. And it keeps Morris. you relevant because I have a lot of pop culture references. Dave missed this. There is I, one sentence that includes four Taylor Swift song titles, and Dave didn't even catch it. I and I meant it that caught way. caught it, but I just refused to comment So you're it. admitting you're a Swifty. No, oh. I'm just admitting that I'm not as culturally irrelevant as you think I am, but I didn't care. Dang it. There's that. So anyway, uh. yeah, there's plenty of uh, plenty of snark in here, including Taylor. No, he wasn't snarky about Taylor. He's uh, okay. I, trust anyway. me, I don't want the Swifties coming the, after me. The serious truth is George exposes the, mo- exposes the most common money myths that are out there. And the excuses that are out there. And he takes them on head on. Credit card schemes, investing traps, mortgage mythology. It's all the stuff you wish you were taught in high school. And uh, some of you people that are bitching about me being a boomer all the time. Well, we have the answer for you. It's called George. And so this book I've will I've been called that. Dave Jr. And I think it's a compliment, but I don't know anymore. I, I would comb your hair carefully if that's what you're called. I'd be worried about my hairdo. I'm going to protect the quaff at all that's costs. To protect the quaff protect the quaff. RamseySolutions.com slash store. You're going to get knowledge and confidence with this. Breaking free from broke. The ultimate guide to more money and less stress. Damon John, Mike Rowe, Graham Stephan, The Minimalist, and Rachel Cruz are on the back endorsing and saying it's awesome because it is. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply.
George Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us. 888-825-5225. Amber is in Houston, Texas. Hi, Amber. How are you? Oh, Uncle Dave, I have a bit of a heart uh, heartbreak. Um, I'm calling for your advice regarding my father's uh, finances, please. Okay. What's going on? Um, he, Well, he has three different credit cards in the total of $26,000. Mm-hmm. He's fallen for every scam. He's 81 years old. He's fallen for, he's made every Nigerian prince rich at this point. Wow. Um, we're intervening in his finances. So his bills, we can help with his bills. We can help with, he's got his mortgage covered with social security. Uh, bills are 2,300 approximately. He brings in $2,091. The total credit card outstanding amount is 26,000. And we don't know at this point whether he should declare bankruptcy or we should let those credit cards go into default and try to negotiate with the collectors. I'm just not sure how to help with those things. I'm, I'm guessing he has no money. He has no money. He brings in uh, 1926 in Social Security. Yeah. What does, what's, the, what's the house worth? A lot. We're trying to keep it. What's the house worth? Sell it. 550 probably. Okay. And what's the O on it? 340 Okay. All right. In tech, is he in Texas? No, Oregon. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I I am not. Uh, I happen to know Texas law because it's unusual. I don't know Oregon's law, but I suspect it's a standard, a fairly normal state, which would mean that they eventually could take a lien against his house if they sue him. Mm. Okay. okay. If you don't pay them and they sue him, they take a lien against his house. He has no money to pay them. There's no money in this budget. Right. And he has no money. Does he have a car? Right. Uh, not one that's worth anything, no. He has a vehicle, but my brother gave it to him. It's on its last legs. Like $1,000 or something? Yes, under three, yes. Okay. All right. Um, and you have siblings? Yes. Okay. Uh, how are the siblings as far as money? Do you have any? Do they have any? Can can we get a yes. can we get a group together and chip in and come up with ten grand and settle twenty six thousand dollars worth of bad credit card debt? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let it go yes. bad. Let it go bad, and then go settle it before they take it okay. before they take a lien on his house. So go bad. Don't pay the minimum. You don't. Ha- he don't have money to pay the minimum. With with right. the numbers you gave me, he can barely pay the house payment and eat. Right. He's he been working physically as 81, trying to make the payment. Yeah. So he's been bringing in a little bit to cover, but we've been making up the difference. Yeah. Okay, so let it go to collections and then just fight it out. With yeah, settle it out. Settle it out for a quarter on the dollar for cash. Destroy his okay. credit so he can't get any more in the process. Yeah. That's is what he, that does. It, is he just, living alone? He is right now. We plan on moving there in three years. Um, but so we've taken, I've taken over his finances. We've cut up credit cards. He, he had every spyware on his computer. So we're trying to oh. get rid of that. Mm-hmm. Well, what's so his mortgage payment? Because my worry is his expenses keep going up. He makes the same amount mm-hmm. of money. You guys are chipping in for the next 10, 20 years to try to support his lifestyle, which ain't much. Yeah, that's what my husband says. That he needs to sell the house and make other payments. We're trying to. This is his family home, and so we're. Nos- it's nostalgic to us. The mortgage is seventeen fifty six. To answer your question, yeah. goodness. And so he. So he has two thousand coming in seventeen fifty six going on the mortgage. He doesn't have the money to eat. Then does he? No, and so we're putting in a thousand dollars to cover his bills. And well, that nostalgia getting- is going to get replaced with this core memory. And so I'd rather sell the house and have him retire with dignity than have your nostalgia tied up in this, keeping him in this awful situation. You're paying the 1000 Yes, my brother and I. Oh, your brother and I. There's just two of you? Um, there are three of us, but only two that are financially stable. Okay. And the um, 
you have a written agreement where you recoup that when he passes before we start splitting the house equity up? No, we thought about putting it into trust and getting the name, the home into our name so he can't. No, I'm talking about your other sibling shouldn't get a third uh, until you get your thousand dollars a month back. We haven't yet. No, yeah, Yeah. I know you're right. Yeah, I am right. And this is going to come up later and it's going to get it's going to get real testy later when the one that doesn't have any money thinks that she hit the lotto or he hit the lotto when the house is up for sale and Papa's died. Oh, so please get this dialed in. The right thing to do financially is sell the house and help him make a transition into another place that he pays cash for, and you pay off these debts, and we put him on a budget. That's the right thing to do mathematically. What I'm describing with an 82-year-old is very, very difficult. Yes. Emotionally. Family house, nostalgia, all the things we're talking about here. So what probably will happen is you all will limp along feeding this at $1,000 a month, and you'll chip in and get $10,000 together to knock out the $26,000 in bad old credit card debt. His credit will be destroyed. When he passes, you'll sell the house, recoup the $10,000 plus the $1,000 a month that you put in before you split with your sibling who's not putting anything in, and that's all in writing now. If you're willing to feed it to that tune just to keep him in the house— The only reason you're doing that, by the way, there's only one reason you're doing that. That's to keep him in the house. Yes. So the strain that you're putting on your brother's finances and your finances to do all of that is only to keep your dad in this house, which if you've got $2 million, it's no big deal. If you got 20,000 bucks and you're throwing a thousand of it, that's, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. We have a million and four at one K. Yeah. Plan, but but our daily, you know, my budget is dialed in. Yeah, we have fifty. We follow your plan, so we have fifteen going into. But yeah. we just make know, sure you, right. you you've got to go do your paperwork now. And if Dad will not give okay. you to sign over full power of attorney and um, all decision-making rights to you and your brother, and your sister will not understand, or your brother, whatever the third one is, agree to you recoup before you split uh, in writing then any of those end this discussion and we sell the house. I understand. Okay. Make it crystal clear. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone needs to have every T crossed, every I dotted, and everyone is on the same page and discussing this because your dad's of his right mind. He's just susceptible to scams. Yes. He's not, he's not like in third stage dementia or something, right? Not yet. No. Okay. All right. So, no, yeah, and you know, exactly. he's eighty-two. So statistically, you're going to do this for two years or so. I don't know what his health mm-hmm. is like, but he could do it for ten. George is right. Could do it for twenty. George is right. Those are possibilities. But statistically, you know, we're, we're not doing this for a long, long time. And the other thing you, I would be real clear on is this is what we're going to do for now. We reserve the right okay. to decide to sell the house later. Like you, okay. you may reach the end of your rope on this. Your husband might, your brother might. Well, and that, from a husband's standpoint, if it were your wife and your in-laws, and you see financially this is a poor decision, that would really be. I don't think it's a you. poor decision because you're going to get your money back out of the equity, and basically okay. you're ca- you're putting a strain on your cash flow, but you're not. It's not costing you anything at the end of the story. And the strain on the cash flow is in return for your dad getting to live out his last days in in his family home. That's the trade you're making. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad trade as long as everybody's on board and everybody's signing up for this. But, Dad, you do one more stupid scam, we're done. Uh, Sister, brother, you don't agree to a recoup, we're done. You're not going to live on a budget, and we're going to pay your house payment, and you're going to, and I'm going to manage your money. You're going to sign over a power of attorney. We're done. We're done. There are there are stipulations to play in this through and putting the strain on our family.
Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. George Camel Ramsey, personality, soon to be number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. On the stage in the Ramsey Solutions lobby, we have a very special guest uh, on the debt-free stage. If you didn't know, money problems are the number one thing that stress out employees and team members at your company. And if you didn't know, we help companies big companies and small companies with that by providing an HR benefit to them called Smart Dollar that allows them to have their team members go through our curriculum. It's kind of like financial peace at work, sort of, but a little different. But I mean, it's, it's us teaching you how to bid on a budget, how to get out of debt, how to live on less than you make, all that kind of stuff. And uh, and it's fun. It's taught by me and George and Rachel and so on. And so... Um, it's pretty incredible. One of the companies that has had all of their team go through Smart Dollar and provided it to them as a benefit at no cost to the employee is U-Haul. U-Haul is a great company, by the way. We've had a lot of interaction with them over the last couple of years. They do a great job. And um, so for U-Haul team members, that's translated uh, to a combined $6.7 million in debt paid and in dollars saved. That means that those team members are not stressed about money. So while they're at work, they're thinking about work instead of MasterCard. Ta-da, productivity goes up. That's how that stuff works. So this is the deal. So all of that to say our debt-free scream is from a U-Haul team member. And that's Chris and Jessica. Where do you guys live? Elk Grove, California. Okay. So you're not in the home office. Home office is Phoenix, right? Correct. Okay. Cool. How long have you been with U-Haul? 23 years. Wow. That's a long time. So they come in and go, da 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 smart dollars here. Had you ever heard of us when they presented all this? No, I have not. Oh, so it's all brand new. Yes. So company benefit, which kind of could be like a little bit of an eye roll. Like yes. A little bit like, yep. uh, yep. what is this? What are you guys? You know, snake oil. <laughs> That's what I would do. Right. Did you do that a little bit? That's what I did. Ah, I you go. That you does, go, do Jessica. The <laughs> I like someone with the gift of cynicism. Good for you. But All you right. gave it a shot anyway. But you gave it a shot anyway. Yes, so Chris says, okay, company's providing this. It doesn't cost anything. We might as well try it. What'd you tell her, Chris? I was at a conference when I learned about it. And so when I got home, my bright idea of let's get out of debt when she's the one that does all the books ah. and so i come home with a great idea now you're a genius yes. yeah okay and she kind of looked at me like no you don't know what you're talking yeah, about yeah stay away from my stuff i got it figured <laughs> out yeah so how did y'all decide to actually take the class um it was more of me watching youtube listening to the podcast getting her stuck in the car to listen to it as well so you kind of sampled some of our stuff in the market yep. and then that enabled you to plug back into smart dollar at u-haul yep okay very cool. So, Jessica, what convinced you to actually try it, at, try the actual smart dollar thing, which you're watching YouTube, listen to the podcast, or what happened? It didn't cost anything, so what could it hurt? Ah, except that they might have some weird ideas. Probably thank, thank not. Thank God so. you and I are both smart. <laughs> but, yeah, we're, at least we're not, at least we're not, because I bet you we were on the same team, yep. weren't we? Yes, yeah. we were. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, as long as you both wanted to get out of debt, you're like, all right, he's making sense. Let's do this thing. Absolutely. Yeah. How much debt did you guys have? Combined, we had two hundred ninety-one thousand dollars. Wow. And what did that include? Uh, we had a rental house that had one hundred eighty thousand uh, dollars. 
Um, we had a travel trailer that was about 7,000 remaining and 73,000 in credit cards. Wow. The credit cards were kicking your butt. Yep. Yes, they yeah. were. We're did, you sell the re- did you sell the rental house or pay it off? We sold it. Sold, sold it. March okay. of 2020. Ooh. That was my birthday present. <laughs> Mic drop on the timing, though. Uh, yeah. Wow. A thousand percent. Yes. Yeah. Wow, yes. thank you, Jesus. Oh, my if goodness. If my prayers were to be answered, it was that day because wow. the people that were renting the home um, were in the restaurant industry. Industry. Oh, industry. oh. Mm-hmm. yeah, which means they lost their jobs in the Fauci pandemic. Yep. yep. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. So how long did this take to pay off 291? No, they sold us. The house was 180. Right. Mm-hmm. So you had 75 in credit card debt, mm-hmm. and then you had to plow through the other. How long did it take to pay off that other debt? The remaining uh, debt. 21 months. 21 months. Good for you. Good for you. Well, because you haul, all of you haul is going through this, uh, we're going to treat you all like we treat a Ramsey team member when they're doing their debt-free screen. We're not going to ask your income because all your buddies are going to be watching this and they're going to go, I know what Chris makes now. <laughs> and we're not doing that. So uh, we're going to give we're going to give you a little uh, give you a little break on that. that. But congratulations. What do you do for a living, Jessica? I raise our children. Yay! Awesome. Yes. Full-time domestic engineer. I love it. Good for you. She's our Very CEO. Cool. <laughs> so now that you went through Smart Dollar, um, and you pay off two hundred ninety-one thousand, including the sale of one hundred eighty-five, you pay off travel trailer and the credit cards by the hard way. Uh, well, I guess you probably got a little equity out of the rental, right? To throw yeah. at it. About 43000 Okay, so that jumped up some of it. And then the rest of it, you just budgeted through, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Cut up your credit cards. <laughs> Don't get them anymore. <laughs> um, but just really... Cold turkey. No. Plastic yeah, surgery. Yeah. Chop, chop. Did a lot of that. Just seeing it on paper mm. and really getting sick at how much we had and going, what what did we buy? Yeah. Like, where is all this where stuff? Where is this going? Yeah. Yep. So it was just, it was freedom, finally. Yep. Getting the app, using a mm-hmm. budget, and seeing your money's actually going somewhere that you don't want it to go. So the every dollar app? Yep. yep. Yeah, okay. And getting it transitioned to putting it where we actually need the money to go versus the restaurant here, Amazon there, Target, whatever. Yeah. Um, by getting on the budget and actually knowing where every dollar goes allowed us to kind of get a raise as we cut one credit card, we got more money, and next thing you know, we're just rolling and kept that snowball going until it was all gone. Wow. Mm. Was there an extra layer of accountability with team members and HR? Was it kind of like, all right, we got to do this thing? Um, I think the the kids were the biggest motivation. Mm. Um, knowing that they're getting older, that if we didn't do this, college was going to be a lot harder to do. Um, setting them up for success so they weren't going down the same path as us was kind of the motivation to keep going and get it done even faster because all the other ways we did didn't work. That's a strong why, changing yeah. the family tree. Very um, cool. Yeah, and we got a phone call this morning from our daughter to get her first acceptance letter for college. So Ooh, yeah, there's so. some timing. Yeah. 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 Wow. We got to write those checks. I mean, we get to write those checks yeah. now. It's yeah. excitement yeah. with zeros on the end. That's yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's great. Opportunity. Yeah. Opportunities. So, Chris, what do you do at U-Haul? I'm a marketing company president. So okay. I oversee the region of all the U-Hauls in our district that I work in. So. I got you. Okay, cool. And you've been there 23 years. How many team members does U-Haul have total? Um, I believe about 40,000. Okay. Wow. Yeah, pretty substantial company, to say the least. I mean, we all think of it as the truck or the trailer uh, yeah, from the consumer viewpoint, right? But it's a big dead cup company. Yep. Yeah. So as a leader then, 23 years in that company, you've now personally experienced this. You're able to concentrate on work because you don't have two hundred and seventy one ninety one thousand dollars worth of debt hanging over yep. you. And you're now congruent with your spouse. You're working together mm-hmm. instead of her doing it by herself. Right. And then you trying to figure out what's happening and um, and her wishing you would have helped and all that stuff. Right. Yep. So now you, so you see the benefit personally. Uh, but I, I'm curious because I don't get to ask this very often. Um, sometimes when I'm doing something in leadership. I personally get to experience it like you have, but I also immediately see if the person downstream does it, how it's going to benefit them and benefit the company. Right. Because they actually think, do you see that, the, the stuff we've been talking about with productivity and I do. some of the team members getting their, getting their lives back? Yeah, because we're able to focus more on what we're doing at work versus at home. Um, I'm able to talk to my staff on different things with my team on ways that they can better their personal life because you get to know all of your team members and get to know about their family, 
kind of their financial, if they're talking about going to buy a car or I got to leave early, I got to go do a refinance or I got to pick up a second job, that kind of thing. Yeah. At least you got a place to go to discuss it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Way to go, you guys. We're proud of you. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you. And uh, our salute to the U-Haul leadership team for letting wonderful people like Chris and Jessica go through Smart Dollar and paying off $291,000 in debt. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free! debt-free! Yeah! <laughs> Gotta love it, baby. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAM or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. George Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Nick is in Greenville, South Carolina. Hi, Nick. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, sir. Thank you for having me. Sure. What's up? So um, I am curious how I should go about um, starting to tackle a small student loan mountain <laughs> um, when I'm on about 3000 a month, and after expenses, I have about 900 spare. Um, so the student loans just started my first payments last month. Um, wanted to know, should I um, do the snowballs? Should I tackle it with an avalanche method? Um, and how to go about doing this all the while? properly preparing for a tax season because I'm the independent contractor. Cool. What's the total student loan debt that you have? Um, right around 33,000. What do you do? I am a Uber driver. I am in my college town. I just recently graduated with my bachelor's and I'm sticking around the area. What's your degree in? Bachelor's in what? Um, psychology. I'll be applying for a, a master's for uh, clinical counseling, um, and that hopefully, if I get in, that'll start August. How are you going to pay for that? Um, I am thankfully on the GI Bill. Um, I got most of my bachelor's, well, all of my bachelor paid with the GI Bill. The uh, 33000 was pretty much living expenses over um, four years due to just cost of living and not focusing on... Uh, working and um i'll be able to have 18 months out of my two-year program for my master's still covered under the gi bill due to how i um did my schooling and i will have to do one semester out of uh, more student loans okay all right nick um you're you're new to the whole ramsey thing um, I know this uh, by I, yes, sir. yeah yeah I know this by the questions you're asking and the statements you're making. Um, so, 
what I discovered and we have discovered years ago is the fastest way to financial peace, peace in your finances, the fastest way to wealth is to avoid debt at all cost because your most powerful wealth building tool is your income. And when you commit it all to Sally freaking May, you, um, you destroy your peace. And that's why you're calling us because you don't have peace right now. Now, when you restart, will the student loans go back on deferral? I'm assuming so, yes, yeah. as long as I am an active student. Yeah, I think so, too. And so um, so what that tells me is the first thing we're going to talk about is how you can get your income up so you can cover future living expenses and keep it up. And no whining, just work. Okay? You're just going to have to work, yeah. my man. And uh, because otherwise you're going to create another mountain of student loan debt because you didn't work. So you're going to have to work while you work on your master's. Oh, well, by the way, almost everyone had a job when they were in college. Almost everyone worked when they were in college. Some were smarter about it and made more than others, but almost everyone that went to college worked. I did. I worked 40 to 60 hours a week when I was in school. Okay. Back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. But um, but anyway, so nothing wrong with working. You can work and you can do a, a master's degree in psychology. And I have no, no problem with your goal. You're going to need the master's to get licensed if you're going to move into therapy, if you're going to move into counseling in most states, including South Carolina. So you're going to have to get the master's. It's permission to play. It's table stakes. So, uh, you know, go ahead and do that. Let the GI pay for it. And by the way, thank you for your service in order to get the GI. As a taxpayer, I'm more than happy to pay for your school in return as a way of saying thank you. So you go do that. But by God, get your tail in and gear and pay for cash for that last semester that you're talking about that's hanging out there, that dangling semester. And by God, get enough money in that you have baloney in the house and you have baloney sandwiches. If not, you eat a wish sandwich, two pieces of bread and wish I had some meat. Okay. We're just going to do whatever it takes to get through this with no debt. You following me? You following my intensity here? Yes, sir. Okay. Because debt is a behavior thing. You kind of outlined that a little bit in your process. So your first goal right now is kind of a physician's goal. Do no more harm. Your first goal is finish um, your master's, no more debt. That's more. Uh, th- I do. I do think I started that pro and the, the first step to that. I am in a debt consolidation program. Um, and so that's two, two of my credit cards have, have already been cut up and no longer being used. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, the point being, we're going to live on what we make and then step two, step one is no more debt, finish the masters, right? You with me. If we can find any more money above that and we want to start reducing debt, then we would use the debt snowball, not the debt avalanche. The okay. reason is the debt avalanche normally doesn't work because you're in psychology. It's a feedback loop. Okay. Yeah. When you pay off the smallest debt, it encourages you. It's like going on a diet and I lost weight. The avalanche is I go on a diet and I gain three pounds the first week. I'm getting no traction. I get no positive feedback loop to encourage me emotionally to in, to stay engaged in a difficult behavior change. Yes, sir. It's the rat pushing the lever. Needs some freaking cheese. Hello. Well, that's all we are. And so the, the reason the debt snowball works is feedback loop. It's not the math. It's mathematically incorrect. Because we're paying it off smallest balance to largest balance, regardless of the interest rate. But the difference is, mathematically, it has a much higher probability of completion. And the debt avalanche has an almost zero probability of completion because there's no feedback issue. There's no feedback loop. And so the the feedback is so long that no one stays engaged. And so the mathematical probability of completion goes down. So overall, technically speaking, if you want to get really nerdy about the math... When you build in probability of completion, the debt snowball is actually mathematically more correct than the avalanche. 
But, you know, we're, now I'm getting real nerdy on you. But so you intellectual. Go. But, it, yeah, Dave's right. I had the, a very similar situation to you, Nick. I was $36,000 in debt 10 years ago in my student loans. And I thought intellectually, well, it makes sense to do the highest interest first when I broke them all down. And it turns out when I started using that debt snowball method, I actually got this little thing called hope. If I can knock one out, I can knock the next one out. It's a little bigger. If I can knock the next one out, it's a little bigger. I start freeing up these payments. They start making traction. And 18 months later, I was debt free. I don't know that I'd be saying the same thing today if I had used the avalanche method. Yeah. And George even paid off his home. That's into your future down there, Nick. But um, so I, I think what needs to happen is, you, you know, what we win at in life is the things we concentrate on. If we're going to, if we want to run a half marathon, we have to concentrate on the training to prepare to do that. If you want to graduate without any more debt, you have to concentrate on that. And that involves keeping your outgo down and your income up. And these are the things we're concentrating on after this discussion today that you and George and I have had. And so that, that would be our thing. Work the debt snowball. But truthfully, I don't expect you to make a lot of progress on it in the next two years. Because your main focus is for Nick to graduate with no more debt of any kind. And live on, you know, make enough money to live on and finish that last dangling semester on the end there the dangling semester i like that it could be like a blog but yeah but the uh uh yeah that 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 you can do this nick i'll tell you what we're going to send you a copy of the book the total money makeover uh which is my best-selling book ever it's about 10 million copies out there it'll show you exactly how to do what we're talking about and you can play through and do this but part of it is just making that paradigm shift and going, I'm going to try a proven plan instead of trying to intellect my way out of this. That's huge when you can just commit to a process. Yeah, it, it's, um, you know, behavior follows belief. And belief does come from a feedback loop. Belief is hope, right? And so yeah, I have to believe it's going to work, and then I'll engage in the sacrifice in order to win. And Nick, I know, and I want you to believe that you can do what we just told you to do. This is The Ramsey Show. of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. He's also the co-host of Smart Money Happy Hour and the host of the vastly popular YouTube channel, the George Camel with a K, K-A-M-E-L channel, and it's full of snark and fun and humor and basic uh, really good knowledge that helps you attack everything out there in the money space that where people are telling you lies to get your money. We're announcing today George's brand new book, Breaking Free from Broke, The Ultimate Guide to More Money and Less Stress. It is on pre-sale starting today. Uh, the book will actually pub on January the 16th, which means that's when we'll mail it to you. In the meantime, we're going to have it here for sale, and uh, that includes a whole bunch of goodies. Whenever you buy the book, now or later, you'll find a QR code or six internal that'll help you uh, sign up for a free three-month run on every dollar premium that does the bank connectivity and does the whole deal. That's a nice value in and of itself, and... Um, that makes the book worth purchasing. If you pre-purchase it, of course that's included. You're also going to get instant access to George's newest talk, Show Me the Money. Exclusive access this fall before Christmas to an online private event, including a Q&A with George. Uh, we're talking about a, an online financial event, helping you with your money. Uh, includes the audiobook and the ebook, which will come out in January simultaneous with the book. George, congratulations. Thank you. I'm pumped on this. It's, you know... 
I've been working on it for a year now, and so it's weird to now be able to talk about it publicly, but this is a 10 years of working here at Ramsey trying to help people avoid some of the myths, traps out there, and the gap between financial stress and financial peace is littered with those, as you know. So I'm trying to clear the noise, make it simple, make it fun. This is everything you wish you learned about money but never did, and uh, I'm re- the team has done such a great job with it. And well, you've done it. I mean, the research is airtight and the humor and the snark uh, destroying some of this TikTok stuff that's going on out there. The cryptocurrency garbage, the uh, whole life garbage that's come back, the nothing down real estate stuff that's come back. Uh, the idea that, you know, you're going to get rich with credit card, airline miles mm-hmm. and all this stuff. You go through line by line by line by line by line and help people break free from being broke. And you address every one of the the lies that are out there in this toxic money culture. Oh, yeah. Every objection, every myth. And I try to do the one two punch with a lot of research and a lot of humor and, of course, some empathy to go. I understand it feels like it's harder than ever to get ahead with money, but you can break free from broke in 2023 and 2024. Yeah. So for you, millennials and Gen Z's, the cool kids are now here and they'll be here to help you. I've never been the cool kid, but according to Now you're officially the cool kid. Dave has knighted me the cool kid. Well, I mean... The, the thing is, you're being measured against me, which being the cool kid the then is, is a low. very low bar. So um, I appreciate yeah, that. Showing up beside me, you just need to be a kid. I got to hang cool. out with That's Dave it. more. That's really it. helps my brand. <laughs> Mark is in Toledo. Hey, Mark, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for having me. Sure. What's up? So me and my fiance were in a bit of a situation. She took her car to get her oil changed at one of those uh, instant oil change places. And they didn't put enough oil in the car, so she left and she drove it and then started having some problems. Took it back there and they topped it off with oil. She drove it a little bit more and the engine blew up. So we took it, we had it towed to a shop. The shop said it was due to lack of oil. They said, contact your insurance, contact Valvoline and file a claim. Our insurance company denied the claim because they said it was because of maintenance, lack of maintenance. It was a and lack of Valvoline is, is what it was, yeah. <laughs> and Valvoline is saying they did everything right and they put enough oil in the car. So now uh, we have a car that we have $12,000 on, and it's sitting at a shop, and it needs a $10,000 engine, and both of our insurances are saying it's not our fault. It's, well, it's, it's not your insurance. Yeah. You don't have insurance for blown engines. There's no such thing. So, yeah. um, it, but it is Vavilene's problem. I mean, you have a legal problem. Yes. Yeah. Have you contacted an attorney? <clears throat> yeah, I have. Yeah. My friend's an attorney and he's in the car industry as an attorney. And he's saying, if you can't really prove it, you might be kind of out of luck. So I have, I've reached okay, out to you, the you, 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 you need a different lawyer than your okay. friend. Okay. Because um, there, there's two issues involved with the strategy here. Issue number one is being able to prove it. But uh, we have a consumer here that says Vaveline didn't put Vaveline oil in the car and it blew up. It's a pretty simple equation. There's nothing wrong with the car prior to that day. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the mechanic has given the expert has said the car blew up because it didn't have enough oil right after you went to the oil place okay this is not that difficult an equation right (laughs) that's what i thought okay from a legal perspective it's not okay so now vaveline has to decide if they want to spend twenty five thousand dollars in legal fees because you're going after their throat or if they want to just fix the car which is what they should do Mm -hmm. and the way they decide that is you sue their butt And then they look down and go, oh, this guy's serious. So what you need to do is call the the store manager. I assume you've already had a discussion or six with him. Yes. Okay. And say, I need your legal department for my attorney to get in touch with because I'm getting ready to sue you personally. I'm going to sue the guy who didn't put the plug in personally. I'm going to sue the store and the franchisee personally. And I've already trashed Vaveline in front of 22 million people on the Ramsey show. And this is going to get worse for you guys. Okay. Because, I mean, 
what you're describing, you're not calling up like some drama queen and you're not you're not acting all crazy. You're just describing a, you know, a, a ten dollar an hour guy didn't put the stinking oil plug back in. Hello. Well, well, and it's they're saying their guns were calibrated and they have it on video that the oil got put in there. But then where did it, it go? There, it magic. Well, did I, you use the disappearing <laughs> oil? I didn't know you had that. <laughs> when I took it back, the guy put more oil in the car. Yeah, so, how's that possible? If it was the proper amount, it would have been spilling out through the manifold and blowing out through the muffler when you overfill a car with oil. Mm -hmm. It didn't blow up from too much oil. What type of attorney should I look for? Mean. Or how do I go about finding... Mean okay. and angry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm serious. Uh, because here's what's going to happen. Yeah. What I'm describing to you is you are going to become a larger hassle to them than they want to deal with. And so they're going to fix the car. The squeaky wheel gets the grease or the oil <laughs> in this case. I don't think we need any more oil. I think we've had quite enough of oil in this case. But yeah, yeah, you need to get someone that's going to get all up in their stuff and say, listen, we're going to sue you and we're going to make a spectacle of you. And these corporations cave like yesterday's minute. Uh, oh, my God. And it's just that they're going to write a check. That's what needs to happen. You need to get your dad good money out of it. Because what you're describing is a very clear case. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. George Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jacob is in Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, Jacob. How are you? Oh, well, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. I'm doing very well. Good. How can we help today? So my question for you is if going back to school to pursue my bachelor's is a smart use of my time, do you have any degrees currently? I do. So long story short, um, I'm in performing arts full time. And my associate is in recording student engineering, which I got off of tuition waiver, academic merit scholarship, and COVID grants during the pandemic. And so I was able to graduate without a diamond student debt. Great. <laughs> and so this particular opportunity has come up to where I can pursue my bachelor's in music business with some pretty generous discounts and some other incentives that will allow me to go through the entire duration part-time and my entire financial obligations will probably come out to about maybe 3000 total. What are you changing horses for? Well, I guess what it is is that is that you know I you know I work full time, but I also have four part time jobs on top of that. So I you work part you work part you work full time as what? What do you do? I'm a production manager and an audio engineer and recording engineer for a performing arts organization, and I also have four other part time jobs in related fields. For fun, or are you trying to earn some extra income? So the part-time jobs are for extra income, but there's also a lot of personal fulfillment to it. Okay. So, remind me again what you just said your current degree was in? Uh, my current degree is in recording student engineering. Oh, okay. Okay. So are you wanting to do something totally different? No, just music business. He's wanting to get in the music side instead of the or the business side. Right? So, yes. Yeah, so, 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 the, so the big thing is that 
is being able to extend and advance my career essentially and to broaden my knowledge on the music that is part of it. And and I come from, also come from a background of doing commercial real estate management and after getting laid off, it was my wife that actually told me to go back to college to study something that I know that I like. And so I chose recording student engineering and I've been busy nonstop ever since. And yes, I put in a lot of long hours, but I've never been any less stressed and it's never been a stressful job doing what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried this isn't going to give you what you want. You get on the other side of this and you have a degree and you were able to pay for it, but it's not anywhere closer to what you want to do. Because we got a lot of music business degrees that work here at Ramsey Solutions and we don't have a music department. So I tell you that to say right. it's not going to just magically give you this perfect dream job in music business just because you have the degree. And, what will and, is relationships and networking and those kinds of opportunities. Yeah, if you can do – if you have done commercial real estate deals in the past and you can do audio engineering, um, you don't need a music business degree to do business in music. It's not, it's not, right. it's not permission to play. They're not going to teach you anything in that degree that's going to be earth-shatteringly different. The business principles that you are already aware of function in the music business as well, and um, the business of music, so to speak. So, uh, you know, if you're coming out of school as a kid and you're 22 and you want to go into the music, the business side of the music business, uh, then a music business degree might be, but a business degree also would just do it. You don't have to know anything about music. Um, you just got to be able to do business. And I mean, so, uh, uh, and the thing is, you don't get joy from that anyway. What you get joy from is actually producing, right? Yeah. And you don't, and... you don't need a music business degree to grow your production career. So no, I wouldn't do it. Okay. That's fair. I wouldn't do it. Uh, I, I, cause I don't think what you do need is you do need, a, a, and what you're willing to engage in is to increase your knowledge base, but a degree is not necessary. If you want to go audit some classes on accounting and marketing, and you want to take a few business, if there's a local curriculum that has a music business, uh, actual subject matter, and you want to take a couple of those classes, that's fine. But that's far different than engaging in a full degree program. And not and that's all that's necessary. You, in other words, put some tools in your belt that you don't have in your belt now that enable you to take those next steps. But the sheepskin, the actual degree itself, is not is not the door. It's not the door opener. The knowledge is the door opener. Does that see? You see that, the difference? That does make sense. Yeah, like yeah. five classes instead of thirty is the difference. <laughs> and. and even in those classes, you're not going to learn everything you need. Some of it, you're just going to get your foot in the door, and you're going to learn and be mentored by whoever's leading you in that particular area. But I don't sense that you're wanting to run a record record label. No, and it's, and, and you know, a big part of it is to you know advance my knowledge in the music as part of it, and that and you know, and the organization that I also work for is also offering that if I do my pursuits, then they'll also underwrite any additional expenses that may be incurred with it. Yeah, but just because it's free doesn't mean you need to invest your time to do it. All right. I think you need to have a, a clear goal for what the career and job is, not for what the degree is. And then, then search out some knowledge that's necessary for that. I mean, we happen to be in Nashville, as George said. I grew up in Nashville. Um, I've got several very close friends that own and run record labels and have built and have sold them. And I, you know, that business, I'm afraid I know more about it than I want to know. And, uh, and, and I just, I don't run into people running around there. They go, you know, I wouldn't let somebody come to work at my record label in the leadership team because they didn't have a music business degree. Zero times have I heard something like this. zero. It's more like, can they get the crap done? You know, it's like any other small business arrangement. And so can you actually be effective? And if you need some more knowledge to be effective, get the knowledge. But do not take the time out of your life to go collect more degrees. That's not going to make your life better. I wouldn't do it. Thanks for the call. Open phones at 888-825-5225. <clears throat> Joseph's in Grand Rapids. Hi, Joseph. How are you? 
Hey, guys. Uh, thanks so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So um, we uh, are about 11 weeks pregnant with our second child. Yay! Um, yeah. <laughs> um, George didn't get any sleep he, last night I'm either. Exhausted. <laughs> Uh, we've only been doing the baby steps a couple months. I know that you're supposed to stop baby step two and um, you know, start saving up. But I was just wondering, um, when should I start saving and like how much? Is it like a specific goal and when to restart the baby steps? All you can in the next eight months or seven months in your case. Okay. All right. Because here's the thing. Mm-hmm. If you let, let's, how much could you save if you went crazy? Like ten thousand uh, I mean, yeah, bucks? Twenty thousand bucks? Yeah. Meet you in the middle at fifteen. Okay. Hopefully. All right. So if you stack up fifteen thousand instead of paying down debt by fifteen thousand, seven mm-hmm. months from today, mommy and baby come home from the hospital, you write fifteen thousand dollars worth of checks and pay off the fifteen thousand dollars worth of debt that you would have paid off during this seven months otherwise. Are you following me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is what did you lose? The interest on that debt during that time. Right. That's all. And okay. what did you gain? Huge pile of money and peace of mind while baby's on the way. Sure. That's why we okay. say to do it. That That's our reasoning. It's that okay. simple. Fair man. enough. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So it's not like a specific goal. It's just peace of mind and just a just in case. Because yeah, I'm going to turn around and drain every dime of it, but a thousand as soon as mom and baby come home from the hospital healthy. And at the minimum, you want the out of pocket max for your insurance because you're definitely going to be paying that out over the next eight months. Congratulations, sir. Happy for you. This is The Ramsey Show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. George Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. If you didn't know, money problems are the number one thing that cause divorce in America today. Money problems are the number one stress point of the team that you work with at your workplace. And if it's a if your personal money problems are a stress point, meaning MasterCard is bothering you, you're worried about your car being repoed, you had a big fight with your spouse about money. Uh, that means when you're at work, you're thinking about that stuff instead of work, which is a productivity issue. Hello. So lots of great companies around America have decided to address that. Uh, we coined the phrase uh, a decade and a half ago called financial wellness. And now financial wellness is quite the craze in the HR world uh, to help their team get financial wellness. We have a product called Smart Dollar 
where companies buy our curriculum to teach their teams how to handle money. They furnish it to them as an HR benefit. And lots of great companies across America have done that. Many, many big ones and many, 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 many small ones. And so we're thankful for that. Uh, because what happens is when the team goes through this, they're less stressed about money and their productivity goes up. They're concentrating on work at work. One of the great companies that does that is U-Haul. U-Haul, if you didn't know, is a massively large company. It's a wonderful company. We've done a lot of business with them for a lot of years. And uh, so today we're kind of having a U-Haul day around Ramsey because we've got a lot of the U-Haul team members coming in to do their debt-free scream because they've been teaching Smart Dollar for many, many months now and years for that matter. So uh, over $6.7 million in debt paid and dollars saved within that one company due to the company uh, furnishing this as a benefit to their team, financial wellness with Smart Dollar. On the debt-free stage are Gary and Teresa, uh, good old U-Haul team members. Hey, guys, how are you? Doing great, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. Now, where do y'all live? Phoenix, Arizona. So you would be in the home office? Yes, sir. Okay, very cool. Very cool. And uh, which one of you is working for U-Haul? That would be me. That would be you, Gary. How long have you been there? Going on 15 years. Wow. Long time <laughs> team member. Excellent job. Okay. How much debt have you paid off? $37,500. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, a car and a credit card. Very good. How long did that take? About 28 months. Good for you. Okay. What do you do at U-Haul? I'm a business analyst with our U-Box, which mm -hmm. is uh, shipping containers that are dropped at your house. You load them up at your leisure. We pick them up, and then we'll deliver them from point A to point B. We'll store them, whatever you want. Ah, gotcha. Good ad. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> George, uh, George is ordering one right now, and he's not even moving. I don't even need uh, it. <laughs> sounds great. Okay. That's fun. Awesome. So, uh, that's cool. Uh, how long have you guys been married? This is our second marriage. We're a blended family. Uh -huh. We're going on 19 years. Wow. And one of the things that we, when we first got married, we wanted to keep open our finances together. And we got introduced to uh, Financial Peace University. And then when Smart Dollar came to U-Haul, uh, I just became a champion and a cheerleader for it. Ah, very cool. So, Teresa, the, yes. when this showed up at his work, you already knew about all of it. Right, I knew about it, and I knew what we had done in the past with Financial Peace University as well. So that was another. So that's um, why it was only thirty-eight thousand. You'd fallen off the wagon a little and just had a little cleanup to do. Exactly. I, uh, on the advice of counsel, I'd like to plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, yes. She counseled you not to put your foot I'll, in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly, and that's what it is. And mm -hmm. you know, we just got back on it, and. Every company needs to have smart dollar. Uh, it just is phenomenal. The people at U-Haul that have embraced it, you know, now I have somebody came to me the other day and they said, I can breathe now. Mm. It's just absolutely wonderful. And Teresa, you know, when I was talking with her, she just said, uh, it's so exciting. And the way it's set up, it's so easy to follow. Yeah. So Teresa, did you go back through the smart dollar thing after when he started doing it at work? Um, a little bit. Okay. All right. Cool. So y'all worked on it together again, but it just brought right. it, it just brought it back to for you guys. It was a review. Yes. Right. More than an introduction. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. Cool. Very good. And Very also cool. different partners with it. You know, trying to go through it before when I was by myself after my first marriage. Oh, you weren't married when you did it before. Um, I was married the first the I mean first you, time you I, two weren't married when we financial were peace together okay mm. okay so that yeah that makes a lot of sense then yeah that's a whole new set of eyes to look at it now yeah absolutely yeah very cool that's amazing I'm curious you know a lot of people say well hey that's that's personal stuff leave that at home you got to be at work but what you're saying is you can't really because when you get to work and you're stressed because your car broke down and you don't have the repairs to make it all you're complaining about in the break room is this car and this money problem and so to show up at work and not have that and everyone's on champing in each other that's an amazing feeling oh absolutely and to piggyback on that now when we have to replace tires or something goes out it's not an emergency. It's an inconvenience. Mm. Right. There That's huge. That's and that makes a big difference. That's how it's supposed to work. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Budgeting. You spend less than what you make. Budget. Persevere. Persevere. Mm. Push on through. Push on through. They're yeah. all connected. Exactly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well done, you two. I'm proud of you. Yeah. 
Great work. Very, very cool. So you've seen a difference in some of your coworkers as well then? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Every company should get this smart dollar. It, it just it makes the difference because people see, I can do this. I can live it. And then at the end of the day, like George said, I'm not thinking about how am I going to pay my minimum payment and I'm going to have to get a cash advance and what am I going to do? And then how am I going to go home and face my wife? You know, I think U-Haul has Gary in the wrong seat. As a business <laughs> analyst, he's quite a pitch man. <laughs> I'm impressed. He's, yeah, he's, you to sales. he's selling U-Haul and he's selling uh, smart He dollar. sold me the U-Box I mean, already. I'm buying everything he's selling. I'm just saying, this guy, he's got it lined up here. Way to go, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate that and appreciate the endorsement. And uh, all kidding aside, um, we're thrilled with... Uh, oh, yeah. with being with partnering with you guys, you're a great American company, and I'm thrilled that on an individual basis that uh, you guys are uh, able to win and uh, take this new step in your uh, second marriage here, and, and you know have a whole different level of peace and, and unity there. That's very cool. We're proud for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Excellent. Can, can Excellent. we make one shout out to you the grandkids? You uh, they're the best in the world. Sorry. Dave, uh, but, <laughs> our uh, grandkids, our grandkids, Charlotte and Ensley. That's just you know we would have been much nicer to their parents to borrow your line, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But if I'd have known how great grandkids were going to be, I'd have been nicer to their parents. Yeah, oh, that's, absolutely. That's so, yeah, we're getting ready to keep uh, keep the smallest one over the weekend. So. Um, we're bracing ourselves, and so is he. Prayers so. for you. <laughs> prayers. <laughs> Lots of prayers. It's going to be a battle. Hey, That's hey. fun. It's a battle I will win. <laughs> so, way to go, Gary and Teresa <laughs> and U Haul gang. Excellent, excellent job. $38,000 paid off in 28 months. It was a review, it was a real uh, process to restart and uh, to, to reinvigorate some things in their lives. Way to go, guys. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three. Two, one, we're debt free! Yeah! That's how it's done! Well played, well played, well played. The Smart Dollar team is beaming with pride because they get to see the impact they, they're making every day when they get to meet these people. Absolutely. It's awesome. Yeah. And, and you know, U Haul's got like uh, 40 thousand wild team members it's a huge hurts my brain costco had all of their team go through it as well so we've had a lot of big companies like those guys national you know american brands that everyone knows and then we've had a lot of companies that you never heard of that are small with mom and pop business 100 team members or 50 team members or 300 team members or a thousand team members they're not all forty thousand, you know and, and so that's uh, it, it's Something we don't get to talk about here on the air a lot, so I'm glad we're bragging on them today. Oh, yeah. And, hey, nag your HR team and tell them, hey, I want Smart Dollar. Make it happen. You can go check them out at RamseySolutions.com slash Smart Dollar. Yeah. Or bypass the HR people and just go to the leaders. Ooh, that's a move right there. Boom. Power tell move. Dave Power said move. I could. Power move. This is The Ramsey Show. George Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Lisa is in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hi, Dave. It's a pleasure to speak with you. You too. How can we help? Um, so I have a pretty complex um, question, and I, I've, I've heard your last um, segment previously about shacking up and sharing finances and things like that when you're not married, so please don't chew me out as a, as a disclaimer. Um, I co-signed um, for my boyfriend for a car. Um, he owes about 32,000 or I should say we owe about 32,000 and he's been behind on the payment. 
Um, I've been denied for two personal loans um, for the difference of the vehicle um, due to my debt to income ratio. So I'm really trying to figure out how to get from under this car um, completely. And uh, is this your ex-boyfriend? No, current. Oh, okay. Well, it sounds like he can't afford the car. Yeah. It sounds like he couldn't afford it when you guys got the loan, considering he, he needed a co-signer. And he hadn't paid the payments. Yeah. What's the car worth? So wh why is he not selling the car? He can't afford um, it, and he's doing damage to his girlfriend. There's two reasons to get rid of the car. Yeah, so the, the private sale um, based on Kelly Blue Book was 19000 Trade-in value is $17,000. Um, like I said, we owe 32000 So th that balance, that difference there, don't have the money saved up for that difference, or I'm not able to get a personal loan um, to even cover that. Um, I went to two credit unions, my personal credit union, and then the credit union that the car is financed through, but they said my debt-to-income ratio was just too high in order to approve the loan. Now, the credit union that your car is going through is confused. Uh, you and boyfriend need to go sit down with that credit union and talk to the manager. And here's how it sounds, okay? Mr. Manager, you have a $19,000 car loan and a $13,000 personal loan because you have a $32,000 car loan loan that only has $19,000 worth of collateral. So you're unsecured right now for 13000 If you have to take the car back and repo it, you're going to be unsecured for even more than that. This is you telling the manager this. You following me? Yes. And so our asking you to allow us to sign a note for the difference, the amount that the car won't bring gets the strain off of your bad loan, off of him, my boyfriend, and all you're doing is admitting that this loan is only partially collateralized. He already doesn't have a collateralized loan because the car's upside down 13 k You follow me? Yes. Just explain that to him. Sometimes you have to say that out loud because sometimes a credit union manager hasn't thought this through. And if they thought it through, then they would go, oh, I have a much li higher likelihood of getting my $13,000 amount that we're upside down if I let this guy out of the 19 by selling the car. Because the 13 is not collateralized anyway. Then you, we've reduced your problem to a $13,000 problem. And then you and said boyfriend take six jobs and pay off the 13000 before you pay off anything else and never sign a loan again with someone you're not married to. Okay. See, I didn't yell, did I? I did good. It was a very <laughs> kind, calm day. Thank you. Thank you. It was almost story time. It was so relaxing. Uh, does that make sense to you, Lisa? You, I mean, that's the only way I know to get you out, other than you guys both go work 60, 80 hours a week and come up with 13K. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll try that. Yeah. He can't keep the car. And and you guys have not had this discussion, and he's being a little boy and hasn't admitted it yet. He's doing harm to the person he claims to love. You. Yeah. Because he can't pay the bill. We know that because he hasn't been paying the bill. And it's messed up your credit. Am, am I missing something? No, no. What does he um, make a year? Um, he makes about fifty-five. Yeah, thousand. Yeah. So the car was a bad purchase anyway. Mm -hmm. Buying buying a thirty-two thousand dollars car when you make fifty-five is not is out of line, even if you pay cash for it. And that was just. Did you guys put anything down on this, or was this no, 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 nothing down with a cosigner? Rolled negative equity from the deal no. before into it, didn't you? Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's why you're in thirteen upside down already. Yeah. That explains it. There's no way you'd be that far in the hole otherwise. Oh. Unless it was the world's worst car. But, yeah. Um, what kind of car is it? It's a 2021 Honda Elantra. Okay. Nice car. Yeah. Okay. 
So where's his head on this, Lisa? What's he going to say? Um, so we've actually both been trying to get rid of it. He's on board with getting rid of it. Oh, good. Um, but okay. he's, he, yeah, he's not able to do much. Um, he's relying on me because I have the, the better credit. To yep. Yeah, you used to before he came along. Yeah. Well, it hasn't been reported yet, um, but he's been behind, and I'm just afraid that it is going to start being reported, and then it's going to take both of our credit scores. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's going to, for sure. And um, in the meantime, what you've got is a high debt-to-income ratio, which is keeping you from getting the other loans, right? Yes. That's not the damage. It's not damage credit. It's you got other debt. So what do you make? Um, 60. Okay. So you got $105,000 income between the two of you. I think we need to cut down to beans and rice, rice and beans, and take two more extra jobs and sell everything in sight and get these messes cleaned up. If I were in you guys' shoes, that's what I would do. But this is just this horrible experience for you and for him, for that matter, has been your all's wake up call. We just made a mistake. And uh, Lisa, if 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 you were the only person who ever made a mistake about a car or co-signing for a car in America, we George and I wouldn't have a job. Thank you so for job it's security. Like the, it's like the largest mistake people make, isn't Ooh. it, George? Well, I hope listeners are going, oh, that's why I shouldn't co-sign. Because a lot of people think I'm doing them a favor, I love this person, and then they get themselves in a pickle, and it damages the relationship Yeah. and their own financial world. You know, the worst one is something that's, in this case, Lisa's boyfriend is being fairly mature and is already saying, hey, yeah, we got to, I'm going to help. We got to get rid of this car. How do we do this? He's depending on her to get the money, but um, but he was before. But he's at least he's not saying, no, I don't want to sell my car. Thank God. I was afraid he was going to be that guy. Whiny toddler. But yeah. But the uh, the worst one was like the grandpa co-signs for the, the 21-year-old grandson's pickup truck. Oh, gosh. And now they can't find Junior. He just took off. Disappeared. And doesn't pay the bill. And Grandpa's now on the hook for the whole puppy because they can't even find the truck to repo it. And Grandpa was probably broke to begin with. And broken-hearted because it's his grandson. You know, this is the stuff we deal with every day around here. And the holidays get real awkward. Yeah. Well, and then awkward for him because the kid's gone. We can't find him. But, you know, it's just uh, that, you know. But the problem is he'll never come back to his Grandpa because of shame. Mm Mm-hmm. Even if the grandpa forgives him, it doesn't yeah. matter at that point. He, he's, it's a prodigal. It's a, you know, he has to wake up in the pigsty to come home now. But the shame to come back. And so he's lost his relationship with his grandfather. That's sad. That's priceless. That, that's what happens a lot with these things. And so Proverbs seventeen eighteen says, one lacking in sense signs alone for another. The new contemporary English version says, it is stupid to co-sign. I like that version. <laughs> it's pretty plain. I've co-signed before, by the way. Lisa has co-signed before. I got to pay it. One guy co-signed for me when I went into bankruptcy. He got to pay it. And I had to go back and pay him back later. But his wife's still pissed. And the assumption is that, well, I'll never pay. They'll be good. They'll be able to make the payments. I well, just helped him get the loan. Yeah, But of course that's wrong or they wouldn't have required a co-signer. You know, they require a cosigner because we couldn't pay. And the that's lender why... says, you're going to take the risk, not us. Exactly. That's exactly. it. I was not credit worthy at the time the guy cosigned for me. And guess Ugh. what? It, we proved it. You know, I mean, um, it's just awful. It's a horrible thing. But it's, it's one of those codependent things where we feel like we're doing something nice and you're doing a nice thing in a wrong way that becomes yep. hurtful rather than a blessing. Hmm. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thanks for joining us, America. George Camel, Ramsey personality. 
co-host of the Smart Money Happy Hour podcast with Rachel Cruz and host of the George Camel YouTube channel, is my co-host today. And today we are announcing the pre-sale of his first book, Breaking Free from Broke. The book will come out in January, and on January 16th to be precise, and uh, pre-order starts today. You get $100 in free bonus items. It includes the audio book, the uh, the ebook that you'll get at the time, but guess what? If you order now, uh, you also will get today a uh, copy of instant access to his newest talk, Show Me the Money, and exclusive access to an online private event with George talking about the money issues and a Q&A with George as well. And we haven't announced the date on the online private event yet, right? No, no specific date yet. We're okay. working on that, but it's going to be big. You have to pre-order to be in, signed up for that. And that's part of the package, over $100 worth. Now, whenever you buy the book, inside the book are some QR codes that allow you to get three months of every dollar. The premium version with all the sweet features, bank connectivity, paycheck planning, you name it. So we wanted that because it takes 90 days for people to get a budget, and it's a key to breaking free from broke. So we thought, let's just give it to them. So, George, when I read the book, uh, going over the manuscript to approve the thing as, as the CEO of the company, Um, which I do. I obviously read our books before we put them out from all of you guys, all you Ramsey personalities. Um, The thing I came back to you with was that it's extremely well-researched. It's fun. It's funny. It's really snarky, which I totally loved. Um, And it kind of made me feel like it was like, you know, I wrote Financial Peace in 1992. Wow. And, you know, we've done some revised versions of it after that. Uh, we published it with a publisher after coming out of the self-published world in those days in 1996. It was a bestseller. Uh, and so four years later, adding chapters to it and polishing it up and getting a professional publisher to help me do it. In those days, I didn't know what the flip I was doing. But, you know, so, so but a lot of the information uh, in your book is things that didn't exist in 1992, like you address crypto. Uh, but it's some things that did exist then that we're still struggling with. Credit card debt, yeah. car debt, uh, the toxic things, the lies that people believe in the culture. But you did it in such a way that um, I really think there's going to be a whole lot of people between 22 and 52 that are going to love this book. I think some older ones will like it too. Yeah. But especially if you're like me and you like snark, you'll love it. But um but, it, you know, it's a lot, it's like financial peace for this generation. Mm, I appreciate that. It's very kind. And I did try, you know, the first two thirds of the book, I'm really unpacking this broken financial system and all the lies that we were sold and how we got there. And you're right. The problems are different today, Dave. They go to Dave and they go, well, Dave doesn't understand because when he grew up, houses were $30,000. Now they're four. And I try to just be the middleman between you two, between the audience and Dave going, I get it. I understand. Here's what we can do about it. Because the times have changed. It feels harder than ever to get ahead financially. But I'm telling you, this the principles still work to this day. The baby steps still work if you don't screw it up. And I show you how to break free from that system that we've been chained to with our American consumerism. And uh, I hope it's a plan that helps millions of people I find think this stuff. I think it's going to. Breaking Free from Broke, the ultimate guide to more money and less stress on pre-sale starting today at RamseySolutions.com. Jump in the store, get all of the goodies that will support George, support the marketing efforts for the book. Thank you very, very much. Marissa is with us in Atlanta. Hi, Marissa. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you? Great. What's up? Um, so my question is uh, with the student loan repayment starting. Uh, My parents and I, like many others, are a little overwhelmed trying to figure out our approach. Um, So when we took out loans for my school, my parents didn't have great credit and I didn't have a line of credit. So they took out a plus loan and I'm the third kid that went to school in our family. So they have plus loans for all three of us. And then I have my separate subsidized and unsubsidized loan under my name. My question is, should I have the Parent PLUS loan transferred to my name and refinance it to take the burden off of my parents? Um, Because we're just trying to figure out the best way to approach it. And right now, it's just way too much for them to handle. If you can pay the payment, just pay the payment. Myself or my parents? 
Well, you said your parents can't handle it, and you were going to move it to your name, which would mean you're paying the payment, right? Yeah. I mean, I so I graduated two years ago um, with a health science degree, and I don't make a ton of money right now. Where what do I you make? My original, so I, I just got a new job. I'm going to make $23 an hour, and then I also um, have, like, a side nannying gig as just, like, a transportation to school. Um, but my original plan was to like go to medical school, do that whole thing. And then once I graduated, I was overwhelmed already with the amount of debt that I had. How much debt do you have? So under my name, I have 27,000, but then my, the parent plus loan is, I think up to like 80,000. Okay. Um, well, it does no. It, it it does not add any value to move it to your name. You can't pay it. Mm-hmm. You don't make enough. You're struggling to pay your twenty seven. Am yeah. I missing something? I just, with my parents having three kids, it just all kind of fell on them and. I think with us being the first generation college kids, we didn't really know that much going into it. Um, I don't think that we really did the best research when we were going into school to try to find our best option. Um, and so uh, I, 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 there's, <laughs> I appreciate you owning it. It's obvious mistakes yeah. have been made. Yes. You yeah. got you got one hundred and seven thousand dollars in student loan debt, and you're making twenty three dollars an hour. So obviously, mistakes have been made. There's not right. you know, but 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 that's you know, water under the bridge at this point. If you call me up mm-hmm. and you said I'm making a hundred thousand a year, I'm about to knock this twenty seven out in a heartbeat, and I'm going to take this eighty over and knock it out for mom and dad. Uh, I would tell you just to pay it while it's in mom and dad's name and take the the mathematical burden off of them, but no reason to legally put it in your name. It doesn't serve any purpose. Go ahead and knock it out. But in your case, mm-hmm. you can little you're gonna have to work on your career side, your income side, to be able to address the twenty seven before we can even talk about helping with the eighty. Unless I'm missing the math, am I missing something? No, definitely not. And that's been my struggle because with my degree being so specific with health sciences, my goal was to further my education and go to PA school. Um, And then I worked in medical office for about two years and decided that I didn't want to further my career in it in that direction. Um, Uh, You're going to have to work on the career side of your equation. I don't think spending six figures on PA school is the move right now. Let's clean up the mess first. the, The answer to your question is you can't take your parents' burden. You don't have the strength to mathematically. George Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Jeff's in Jackson, Mississippi. Hi, Jeff. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. How are y'all doing? Better than we deserve. What's up? I heard that. Me too. I just wanted to call and say I have some good news. Me and my wife are currently out of debt, and we own the house that we're in, but some old family land has uh, come available, and we want to get that back. It just so happens that there is a $400,000 house on it. So we're getting ready to jump back into some debt and get a mortgage and also prepare for, you know, retirement and that kind of thing. So um, we want to get the house. We definitely want to get it back. And um, how would you advise on maxing out, aggressively paying on the principal of the loan to try to pay it off? You know, in like the first 10 years versus uh, maxing out like 401ks and uh, mutual funds, uh, the best way to uh, proceed with. Uh, What's you know, your current home worth? 20 years. Um, it's my, it's an old family house. It's my grandparents' house. Uh, we're not planning on getting rid of it. 
Uh, it's going to stay in the family, but estimation probably 300, 300,000 for it. And then it's on a, a big block of land too. So what do you make? Uh, we'll try, um, me and my wife together about 160,000 before taxes. Yeah. How many more pieces of family ground that can't be, uh, that you can't do without, or you're going to run into? Dude, you uh, got a, You got like a, you got like an addiction to the family ground. Well, this is uh, where I grew up. And it's one, one point five acres out of the original forty that my grandparents bought in '79, and they, they got split up throughout the years, and you know they left it to, to me to care for and you know, give it you know on to our kids. So what, what would be your plan? You're not going to move. You're just going to hang on to it. Uh, buy the new house, get the land back. It's right there, close by, and that would be our primary residence. And then we would keep um, the grandparents' house up. And either my sister might move into it, or my mother's getting older, so she might move into it to help keep it up and um, possibly sell their house that they're in. There's a lot of variables here and a lot of mites. All right. The answer to your technical question is wherever you fall in the baby steps. So you're getting ready to go back from baby step seven and be back in baby steps four, five, and six. So you're going to limit retirement to 15% of your income and any of the money mm-hmm. you can find in your budget, you're going to throw at the debt on the um, $400,000 property. Okay. Until you get okay. it paid off that's early. That, that's, that's the answer to your question. Um, and you probably can do that in 10 or 12 years, something like that. Um, but I got to tell you, there's a, a, a narrative running through your stories that's not healthy. Okay. The narrative is, and I've heard it a lot in my life of doing what I do. The narrative is it doesn't matter what it costs or how stupid it is. It's family land and we have to keep it. Mm-hmm. That's in, that's in your story all the time. And um, okay. I'm not sure any of this completely goes over into the stupid zone, but your uh, inability to, I mean, 1979 is not exactly legacy property on an acre and a half. I mean, that's well, not, it's, that's well, not like 1879. That's 1979. I understand, and it was it was sixty nine, and it would. Com- this is is a forty acre block originally. This is just one. I know, but that's it, you only got, and you don't even have the whole block. You've only got an acre and a half. It's not like a big plot of ground that was the family's. Um, so I mean, your your uh, need to protect the family's nostalgia uh, seems to know no bounds, and that scares me for you. Because it's going to lead you into some stupid butt decisions before this is over. You, you're not quite there right. with this. The numbers on this don't scare me. It's the, uh, you know, it, it's the analysis that scares me. Uh, and that, that's why I'm calling you out on it, just because I love you. And I want you to win because, I mean, you know, there's going to be another thing come up. And then there's going to be the property adjacent to the acre and a half is going to come available, the old 40-acre track. And then what are you going to do? And, and then there's going to be another thing come up. And then your sister's living in it, but you own it, and it has to stay in the family and to a dysfunctional level. And, and uh, it's just real estate. It's not It's not your family's DNA. It's just real estate. And so... Um, uh, uh, I'm nostalgic, and the older I get, the more nostalgic I get about certain pres- types of possessions and things that have been in the family over the years, and that kind of thing. I want to hold on to them, but uh, real estate is a very tough one to do that with. Um, my grandmother inherited from her grandfather a family farm. During her lifetime, she and my grandpa subdivided the family farm, sold it off as subdivision lots leaving only about a four acre track and, uh, and an old family farm or family farmhouse that had been in the family three generations at that point. When she passed away, uh, my parents' generation, her kids sold it because none of them were going to live in it. None of them lived in the same town. They weren't holding on to it for posterity. And so uh, I, I'm not fussing at you, Jeff. I'm just saying, man, the way you're working your way through this, it's, um, you're setting yourself up for potential problems. Yeah. And what if the sister doesn't want to live there? Mom doesn't want to live there. Now you've got this upkeep on this house that's vacant. You don't want someone to rent it because it's precious family property. Yeah. It, it just, it's, be careful, man. Be careful. You're, there's some, 
there's some thin ice in where you're skating, but the numbers you're giving me aren't the end of the world. I still think you could do this deal, pay it off in 15 years or less, which is our guidelines. And so you're not doing anything that's, you know, if, if you told me the property is two and a half million and you're never going to be able to pay it off, but you had to do it because it was family, then I would just say, no, you don't. I just say, don't. But you, I think you can afford to pull this off. I hate to see you go back into debt because you kept a 1979 piece of property. Um, again, 1879, maybe. I might get a little bit more emotional about that. But 1979, I mean, Mick Jagger was already old in 1979. I mean, that's you know, it's not that long ago. So, Jay. <laughs> Jamie is in Pittsburgh, uh, I guess. Yeah, Jamie's in Pittsburgh. Hi, Jamie. How are you? I'm doing well. Hi, Dave and George. It's an honor to speak with you. Um, I wanted to let you know I'm an FPU coordinator, and I had a 77-year-old recent widow, um, and she needs some help finding hope. She had no family, so I offered to help her through it. Um, she lives on Social Security and a small annuity, and her credit card minimum payments are 50% of her income. Plus, she has a she had a uh, car salesman uh, in the midst of her grief talk her into getting a new car le- lease. And uh, it seems overwhelming. And I wondered if you might advise me on how to walk through this with her. Oh, what a sad situation, Jamie. Yeah. Um, well, there's going to be a lot of pain. Yeah, because there's a lot of pain. Uh, there's not anything we can do about it. Um, there's not a magic wand in this. She's going to be selling the car. Mm-hmm. And she's probably not going to be able to pay the credit cards. Right? Yeah, I mean, I that's how I was thinking. I, I heard one of your first callers just, and you advise them to stop making the payments. She's been making the minimum payments. Yeah, um, how? How? By putting on yeah, other credit cards because she, she got a, a pay, she got a house payment. Money. Does she have a house but, payment? No, she's renting. Yeah, how much is her rent? Uh, seven hundred and twenty a yeah. month. So her credit cards are way more than her rent. Yes. By the time she pays her credit cards and pays her rent, she doesn't have any money for food. Yeah. Yeah, so she can't pay the credit cards. uh, Doing some, like, playing piano or something uh, to make money to buy food. That'd be great, except we're going to do this the other way around. The first thing we buy is food. The second thing we buy is shelter. The third thing we buy is lights and water. Then we pay what we can pay. And you sell the car immediately. The car's got to go. Or repo it, one of the two, volunteer. But she doesn't pay any more car payments. She can't afford this car. They deserve what they get for selling this lady this car. Oh, what a mess. I'm so sorry, Jamie. personality is my co-host today open phones at 888-825-5225 one of the things we do at ramsey is a product called smart dollar we invented the space called financial wellness financialwellness.com i own as an example so this idea that corporate america goes and teaches their team members how to handle money properly so that they become better team members because they're better daddies and better mommies because they have less stress and they're winning is something that kind of came out of ramsey and uh, our process is called smart dollar major companies all over america do this and uh, as a benefit for their team members And minor companies do this for their team members, people with 100 team members, 1,000 team members. And in today's case, 40,000 team members with a great American company called U-Haul. That's pretty amazing. I think of U-Haul as really these nice little trucks. 40,000 people working there. That's That's a lot of trucks. Man, it's incredible. 
But it's a great, I mean, it's, it's like, a, it's iconic. It's, it's apple pie, you know, Chevrolet, U-Haul. Yeah. I mean, it's it's almost like Kleenex, you know. It's like if you're going to move, you say U-Haul, right? And so it's it's been in the, it's been a part of our vernacular for uh, a bazillion decades. So we're real thrilled that U-Haul has had their entire team go through Smart Dollar, offered it to Smart Dollar, uh, Smart Dollar to them. And we're doing debt-free screams with some of their team today. Eric and Elda are up next to do a U-Haul debt-free scream. Where do you guys live? Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Which would be the home office. Yes, sir. Awesome. What do you do at U-Haul? I'm a project manager. Okay. And Elda, what do you do? I work for Arizona State University in the registrar's office. Ah, cool. very cool. Yeah. ASU. ASU. I love <laughs> <Go> it. <Devils. laughs> very cool. Well, Phoenix is a great town. It sounds like you guys got a great life there. Congratulations. Welcome to Nashville. How much debt did you pay off in Smart Dollar? Sir, we did about $100,000 in 36 months. Good wow. for you. All right. <laughs> well, since a lot of your U-Haul friends are listening and watching and hanging around, uh, we're not going to ask you your income because they'll go, oh, that's what Eric makes. <laughs> Hashtag uh, awkward. Who knew? Yeah, that'd be weird. So we're going to we're gonna let you off the uh, income side of things. But 100000 bucks in yes, three sir. years. So you're averaging 33000 a year, about yes, 2800 bucks a month going towards this. That's substantial. Yes, it yeah. was. What kind of debt was that? Oh, you name it, we were normal. Yeah. Credit right. card, uh, student loans, uh, some medical. Mm-hmm. Um, Car loans. Car loans. Yeah. yeah. So furniture. We bought furniture, you know. Yeah. So you all put this in about three years ago, the first time, right? Yes, sir. I mean, it's still there. New, new team members or team members that haven't done it yet can still do Smart Dollar. But you jumped in three years ago when we, we first did it, right? We did. Okay. And, and so Elda, he comes home from work and goes, hey, work's doing this thing. <laughs> I can hear it right now. (laughs) Uh, That that had to be a little awkward, right? It was very awkward. Um, I'm like, okay, what is it? And what are we doing? We're like, oh, no. What's going on? Another HR benefit. Yeah. (laughs) Eye roll. Yeah. (laughs) Only this one actually is a benefit. Exactly. It sure is. sure is. Did he do a good job selling it to you, or did you have to take some time to come around to the idea? Oh, no, he did an, an amazing job selling it to me. It, I was on board pretty much right away. Okay. Because you felt the money stress, and he was saying, hey, this okay. is going to help us get rid of this money stress, get rid of the debt, have a better life. Exactly, and we're not getting any younger, so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, and we do have a, an 8-year-old, well, we have an 11-year-old daughter, but she was 8 at the time, mm-hmm. um, and so... Not only we did it for ourselves, but we did it for her as well. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's a good why mm-hmm. right there. Yeah, and you just look up and you go, "Hey, we've been living uh, this hundred thousand is like having a backache. I can't get rid of." Oh, it was right. it was crazy, Dave. There was times in our twenty one year marriage, we had twelve cents to our name, mm. twelve cents, <sighs> and I was like, "You know what? Normal isn't working for us. Mm. We have to figure out something different." Exactly. So, what was it you guys learned in Smart Dollar that caused you to be able to pay off a hundred thousand dollars in debt? What's the key? Discipline. Oh, um, that sounds dirty. Yeah, I know. It's cra- crazy. <laughs> well, he's a Marine Corps vet, so. Yeah. Oh. Uh, You're no stranger to discipline. Oh, no. And it's crazy. One of the things in there, don't spend as much money as you have. Like, oh, wait a minute. You're making X, Y, Z. All right. Don't go $10,000, $5,000 over. Exactly. Burn up those credit cards. We actually burned those credit cards up. We actually burned the credit cards. You burned them. We burned them. <laughs> Physically wow. yep. melted we them sure down. Did. It was like burning debt. <laughs> So instead of cutting them up, we're like, all right, everyone to the backyard. Let's go ahead. They're going to the fire pit. In in middle of Phoenix, too. So it was July in Phoenix. Oh. And we're burning stuff in the pit. Whoa. The neighbors neighbors are going, hey, look over there. They lost it. They lost lost it. it. Neighbor looks over. Okay. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Stay away from Eric. (laughs) Eric's burning stuff in summer in Phoenix. (laughs) Wow. Uh, Love it. Way to go, guys. That was symbolic for you guys. It was a line of the It's a big deal. Yeah, because that that changes the world. When you say, I'm done. I'm done living like this. I'm going to do a new thing. The old thing ain't working. And you're correct. It changes the world. But our world, yeah. specifically. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah you, our world. Because you suddenly don't care what the neighbor thinks looking over the fence. It's mm-hmm. like, hey, come on over. I'll tell you about it, buddy. Exactly. Yeah. Especially for our uh, 11-year-old daughter, Erica. Yeah. So, you know, we, our parents struggled, um, and we didn't want that for ourselves or for our daughter. So um, 
So, so it's a general, generational thing. Changing the family tree. Yeah. Amen. That's a Amazing. Changing the family tree. Yeah, that, that's a big motivator and really, really cool. So you're in the home office. So a lot of folks in the home office certainly have done the Smart Dollar program. Yes, They've sir. done it all over the nation. But um, have you seen changes with your other team members? I have. It brings, it brings clarity. So before one had this debt, I would see, you know, this big cloud over. And it would... Honestly, it would, it would zap my focus, mm. you know, zap the focus and the discipline. Coming into work now, you know, it's crystal clear, it's sharp edge mm. going in, and you see it. And for anyone who hasn't tried it, uh, who anyone thinks about doing it, what's the worst that can happen? You can get out of debt. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible oh, worst. You get a whole bunch of your team members out of debt. They'll hate you yeah, for they'll, that. They'll yeah. hate me for it. Yeah, you buy a program, get your team members out of debt. They'll hate you for that, I promise. Yeah. Uh, that's so cool. Good for y'all. Yeah. Very well done. You're heroes. Congratulations. Yeah. And thanks to you, Hall, for furnishing it to you. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're proud, to, proud to have that association. So very, very well done, you guys. Good, good work. All right. We've got the uh, Live and Give box for you that includes the Baby Steps Millionaire's book, the Total Money Makeover book, and a Financial Peace University membership for you to give away. Uh, you've been through the stuff in Smart Dollar, so you'll be able to keep some of that and enjoy it. Some of it you'll pass along to others. Well done, you guys. We're very, very proud of you. Congratulations. Yeah, we want to send our love to Erica, too, who couldn't be with us today. She's with my sister, but we wanted to shout out to Erica. Well, yeah. that's why we did this. That's right. Exactly. We did it for Eric. She's our reason. That's yeah. right. Good for y'all. Very well done. All right. It's Eric and Elda, Phoenix, Arizona. 100000 paid off in 36 months. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt-free. Free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's how it goes down right there. Love it. Well, if you're a company out there or you work for a company, which would be all of you, one of the two, uh, and you want to have Smart Dollar offered, all you got to do is just check it out at RamseySolutions.com. Very easy to get in touch with our team, and they'd love to help you help your team. Uh, it's a it's a flawless system. Costco's got all their employees going through it. I mean, we've got large companies like those, but l most of the companies are not huge like that. Most of them are regular sized companies, and so. Uh, but great, those are two great companies we're proud to have. And uh, and so, if you want to be involved in that, the you know having your company go through it is smart dollar. It meets all of the federal guidelines, meets all their ERISA guidelines, all the stuff you need to know in that HR world. We're up on it, and it's all dialed in so just check it out at ramseysolutions.com and look up smart dollar that's what you're looking for or slash smart dollar will get you there either one this is the ramsey show Scripture of the day, Proverbs 15, 22. Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. The old version says, in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. I like that. Kimmins Wilson says, my success was attended by quite a few failures along the way, but I refuse to make the biggest mistake of all, worrying about making mistakes. Good like that. Our question of the day comes from Neighborly, your hub for home services. Fall is a great time to have AirServe, a Neighborly company, clean your air ducts and make sure your furnace is running properly before the weather gets cold. If you're in Nashville, too late. Uh, learn more about AirServe at neighborly.com slash Ramsey. Today's question comes from Charlie in Georgia. I'm about to start interviewing financial advisors. I'm trying to find someone that is not starting a career, but is my age or older. 
Is it wrong to ask them their net worth? They will know what mine is. Basically, I don't want a broke person managing my money. That's interesting. I don't know that I've heard that one before. Asking your financial advisor what their net worth is. And uh, clearly, he's an older individual. We don't know how old. You know, it's all relative. But he wants to work with someone who's kind of in the same life stage, I guess, as, as him versus a young buck who's just getting started. Hmm. Well, I don't know what my SmartVestor Pro's net worth is. I've never asked, and I've never been curious, to be honest. Um, it's not a, it's not a bad question. It's a little awkward. Um, trying to think. Um, I guess I don't correlate their knowledge base with their income necessarily, which you know correlates with their net I worth. I do to a degree. Um. It'd be nice to work with someone who, you know, if they got $10 million, I want to know, hey, what are you doing? You know, there's a piece of that that's attractive. Yeah, but, it, it, you know, I, um, I mean, if they're, if they're not, if they've been doing it 20 years and they don't have any wealth, then no, I, I would think that I would correlate that lack of results with their lack of knowledge. Because that means they're making money mistakes. They're staying in debt for a long they're, period of time. They're, they're not doing the stuff we're talking they're about. They're not investing. You know I mean? Because if you do the stuff we talk about for 20 years, you're going to have some net worth. Hello, you know, like probably a million dollars or more um, in most every case. So, uh, but I also don't want them to be a player. I don't want them to be a speculator, a, a high roller, right? Um, and and the, the last thing that comes out of this, Charlie, is um, you, you've made one mistake in this. I don't want a broke person managing my money. They're not going to be managing your money. You are. They're going to be doing what you tell them to do. So your job is to get someone with the heart of a teacher. They teach you what to do, and you approve the moves. So they're not managing anything without your input. So you're the one making the decisions. That You should never let someone manage your money blindly. Uh, and so the only way they're going to do – the only thing they're going to be putting money in is things you've approved of, agreed to, um, and they don't make moves without your approval, period. Don't ever be in a situation otherwise. So in that sense, but but I, I, if I changed your last sentence to I don't want someone advising me on managing money well when they don't, mm. that's a fair statement. I mean, my, our joke has always been, you know, um, my finance professor is the one that taught me to borrow money and he was broke. What's wrong with that? It's like a shop teacher with missing fingers, right? And so that's what Charlie's pointing to here. I like your question, Charlie. I like the, the crux of it. I would want to ensure somehow that they were practicing steady, proven, time-honored investing principles in their own lives. Um, I've just got the assurance that my guy is doing that without knowing his net worth. So I don't know how you would get that other than a net worth. Maybe just a discussion to say, okay... You know, I'm concerned that you're actually personally living the stuff that you and I are talking about. Mm, are yeah. you? T tell me that you are and tell me how I know that. Uh, and, and maybe they offer their net worth at that point. Um, but I, 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 it feels awkward and um, I don't want to say inappropriate. But from a manners standpoint, it feels inappropriate. Yeah. If but I'm it's, the not, financial it's not advisor. a wrong question. So I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I, I've never had this. I have never asked. I can tell you that. But I have assurance that they're doing the things that they're telling me to do. There you go. Yeah. I mean, if you're a financial coach, the client doesn't, you know, you, you ask the client, hey, what's your income? But the client doesn't ask you, well, what's your income? That's a weird situation versus their money values. That's something that we can talk about. What are your values around debt? Are you debt free? You know, versus specific numbers that may not be as relevant. Yeah, so. I mean, it's a little bit like your doctor being 400 pounds. 100%. You know, I mean, it's like, huh, kind of an issue here. And bud. smoking. Yeah, it's <laughs> smoking 400 pounds. Oof. That's it, yeah. <laughs> it's something sure to think about, there. you know. All right. it's, it's, a fair, it's a fair thing. Stockton is in Logan, Utah. Hi, Stockton. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for taking my call. Thank sure. You, George. Sure. What's so, up? So, um, my father-in-law, um, he's a very kind man, has a heart of gold, but he's broke and unemployed, but he just will not stop buying us gifts. Um, and we want to know, you know, should we approach him about this? Should we 
talk to him and, and sit down with him, or should we just kind of deny his gifts that he wants to give us? Um, we're not sure how to how to help him out of this. How long have you been married? Um, it's been three, uh, three and a half years. Yeah. How old are you? I am 27. Okay. You shouldn't do anything. Your wife might. It's her dad. Yeah, but definitely. You're just going to be the smart like punk that married his daughter. That's all he's going to see. I don't see yeah, that. I don't I think you are, but I, 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 but I'm telling you, I don't think he's going to hear this from you. But if she sat down and said, dad, listen, we're trying to establish our household here and it makes us really uncomfortable when you do these gifts, cause we know you can't afford them and it's very kind and you're a sweet man, dad. And thank you for that. But it would really help us out if you would limit that or stop doing it. If she says that he can hear that from his own kid, he won't hear it from you. For from you, it's an embarrassment. Yeah, I I agree. So how do we? I guess is there a good way to approach that without embarrassing him? I mean, he he just he loves gift giving is his love language. Just, just what I just him. said. Just let her sit down with him by herself with a cup of coffee and say, "Dad, gift giving is your love language. You're a sweet man, and it's making us uncomfortable because we know you can't do it right now." And we know you love us. You don't have to provide gifts to prove it. Please stop. Please stop or severely limit your gifts. Your presence and your heart is all we need in our lives. We don't need stuff from you. So please, Dad, stop it. And if she says that in private by herself with her dad, gently and kindly in great love, then it's not embarrassing. And um, and she doesn't need to say we that, that you, you stay out of it. I'm telling you, the closer you get to this, the less successful this conversation is going to be. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Well, she's not calling in today, which tells me you care more about this than she does. Is she, does she have the same level of concern? She does. She's just really nervous to talk to him about it. Um, money was just a hard conversation topic in their home growing up. And so um, it's just really hard for her to bring it up. Yeah. Either don't bring it up and just forget it and don't worry about it. Or she brings it up in private. That's your only chance of success. I just, I mean, I think you just added, you added even more evidence that it's not going to go well if you bring it up because, and the evidence is that money's a sore subject to start with. Yeah. And then Stockton, this young dude that married my daughters come marching in here, starts telling me stuff. My sons in law have been married to my daughter for 10 years and 12 years. And, um, uh, I doubt they would probably come in and sit down with me without my, my daughter having done so first on something they were disagreeing about. They might, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad at them, uh, and I'm not saying that. It's just an awkward conversation. It's an awkward relational connection. Mother, daughters and mothers-in-law, sons and fathers-in-law. These are tough connections. And they can be done. And, and I love my sons-in-law. They love me, I think. Pretty sure they do. <laughs> mm. Well, you give them one gift back, and that's the total money makeover. Maybe that'll help them. Ooh, that'll be, be adding insult to injury. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> give them George's book in January. There we go. Breaking there free from go. broke. That that's helps. That'll, that'll do it. Yeah. Uh, that puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace. Christ Jesus.